So tonight we're really lucky to have Stephen Watts back. Stephen Watts uh, has been called uh, by, by another good biographer, Robert Rest Westbrook, a biographer of John Dewey, the Plutarch of modern America because of his books uh, on Walt Disney, uh, his book on Hugh Hefner, which he talked about here in, uh, in the library, uh, and Henry Ford, uh, and now Dale Carnegie. Uh, he's a professor of history uh, at the University of Missouri, former chair of the, uh, of the history department at the university. Uh, and, and Dale Carnegie, um, I have a lecture that I give periodically. People take about a year and a half for people to forget that I've given it before, and then I give it. <laughs> Uh, in, in which, in which I, I, it's the title of it is Missouri, the Center of the Literary Universe. And, you know, we talk about T.S. Eliot and Mark Twain, uh, talk about things that some people don't know, the best-selling cookbook of all time, of course, written in St. Louis by Irma Rombauer. I always like to refer to the first sentence of the first edition as the greatest sentence in American literature, stand facing the stove. Um, <laughs> But also, as part of this lecture, I always tell people that that one of the, that the greatest self-help book ever written was written by a Missourian who always identified himself as as you read Stephen Watts's excellent biography, you'll find out always identify himself as a Missourian. That's Dale Carnegie, who was born in a small town in uh, northwest Missouri and is buried uh, in a, uh, an increasingly not so small town of Belton, uh, just to the south of uh, uh, of us, a part of our suburbs. Dale Carnegie was a true, a true Missourian. Uh, and when you think about it, Walt Disney, uh, a, true, uh, a true Missourian, uh, and, and Jesse James, a true Missourian, you know, they were all in one way or another into self-fulfillment. Um, and and, and Stephen, Stephen Watts writes this wonderful genealogy, it really starts with Benjamin Franklin uh, and, and moves through the, the various 19th century purveyors of self-development uh, who are so important in, uh, in American culture and comes up to Dale Carnegie, who is the apotheosis of self-development, and, and, and ends his book with, as I hope you, he'll, he'll talk about in his, uh, in, in, his, in his talk tonight, with Oprah Winfrey. And you think about the, the, uh, the, 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 the direction, the, the destiny of self-development uh, goes from, uh, from, from self-control uh, with, with Benjamin Franklin to self-esteem uh, with, uh, with Oprah Winfrey, with this uh, a deep, deep, stop uh, with Dale Carnegie. Um, uh, this is a, a powerful book because it really is not just a biography of Dale Carnegie, it's a biography of the emotional development uh, of the United States. Uh, and, and it's not all necessarily good, but as uh, Stephen Watts will, will tell you, it's all really nice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Watts. Well, I just told Crosby he's a hard, hard act to follow here. Um, <laughs> Dale Carnegie would be proud, I think. Uh, you will have to excuse me. I've had a terrible cold, so I may begin sort of croaking like a frog here. So uh, just pretend it's all quite natural. Um, ever since Rob Westbrook wrote that thing for my book about Plutarch, I'd be giving my um, book promotion talks dressed in a toga. But now uh, I decided my legs weren't good enough, so I got the suit instead tonight. <laughs> Well, I do want to talk about my book about Dale Carnegie this evening, uh, who is, I think, a very influential cultural figure in this country for reasons that I hope to lay out a little bit in my talk. And uh, if, it, if you're kind enough to get the book, I will be happy to sign it for you uh, afterwards. The notion of success, I think, lay at the heart of the American dream. And in fact, the idea of the individual moving ahead in the race of life, uh, pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps, uh, as the old familiar saying has it, I think it's embedded in our national DNA. All of us have heard, I think, some version of go make something of, of yourself, go make something out of yourself, uh, usually from anxious parents uh, during our adolescence when we prepare to go off to college. And actually, I think from the founding days of the Republic, uh, boosters and moralists, uh, politicians and shysters, although I risk, risk redundancy on those last two, I think, um, uh, they've been instructing people on the best way to improve their social status and increase their material possessions, uh, which are the two big parts, of course, of the success formula. 
In the 18th century, Benjamin Franklin, and actually I have some slides if this works. There we go. Benjamin Franklin, I think, was the first great success writer uh, in American history and uh, Poor Richard's Almanac, uh, written in the early part of the 18th century. And then, of course, in his autobiography that was eventually published uh, later in the 1700s, Franklin stressed the work ethic and thrift, uh, in particular, as, as the ways to success. Uh, all the sayings I'm sure most of you have heard, uh, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. A uh, penny saved is a penny earned, on and on in that vein. Well, a few decades later, in the 19th century, Horatio Alger, I think, of course, became the great avatar of success uh, in the 19th century, the great formulator of success in a series of novels. Uh, that, in all honesty, were literary train wrecks, but uh, uh, culturally, I think they're gems, uh, really interesting cultural documents indeed. Uh, many best selling books, uh, Mark the Match Boy, uh, Strive to Succeed, uh, all of them with very similar titles. Essentially, Alger told the same story over and over and over again. He just changed the characters a little bit. The story was a virtuous young man. Uh, often an orphan uh, who came from the countryside to the big city and he climbed to success. He rose to distinction through upstanding character, uh, self-denial, and unstinting labor. And for Victorian individuals up until about the end of the 19th century, Alger's directives were a kind of cultural gospel. Well, what about the modern era? who has been the great avatar of success writing in the American century, as it's often termed. Well, it happens to be a Missourian from a rural backwater in the northwestern part of the state. I was born up near Maryville, uh, who rose to become, I think, the greatest purveyor of success principles in modern life and whose efforts inspired a horde of disciples uh, who have followed in his wake. And that is, of course, Dale Carnegie, uh, the subject of my talk and the subject of my biography. In one sense, uh, this book, uh, which is still one of the best-selling books in American history, uh, some people rank it among the top three or four best-selling nonfiction books uh, still uh, in, our, in our collective lives. Uh, in a certain sense, Carnegie in this book, I think, operated in the tradition of Franklin and Alger. But as we're going to see here in a little bit, he also recast, I think, their instructions to reflect many of the issues and, and conditions that were at work in modern life. How to win friends and influence people, in fact, I argue, is a kind of brilliant reflection of deeper values that Americans have come to embrace in the 20th century. But Carnegie, I was shocked to discover a few years ago, has never had a full-scale biography. And uh, so explaining uh, his work is sort of the burden uh, of, of my book, Self-Help Messiah, uh, which came out last October. Um, I, I would note that uh, this book is absolutely essential reading uh, for uh, everyone who does not want to be an abject, miserable failure uh, in, in modern America and get, get ahead. Um, it also, along those lines, I think makes a wonderful inspirational gift uh, for uh, graduations, bar mitzvahs, uh, wedding showers, uh, Christmas, uh, all national holidays, uh, major world religions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that paragraph was written by my uh, publisher, actually. So, <laughs> well, at any rate, um, Carnegie himself, I think, offers a fascinating story of rags to riches in his own life. He was born, uh, as I noted before, up near Maryville, Missouri, into uh, a youth of, of sort of grinding poverty. Uh, and uh, he spent a youth, I think, that was equally influenced on the one hand by his father's repeated failures uh, as a farmer uh, in, in the late 19th century, and on the other hand by his mother's intense Protestantism, intense Protestant piety. Uh, Dale, by the way, is a little guy in front. Uh, that is his uh, older brother uh, behind him, Clifton. Young Dale Carnegie was very bright. He was very intellectually curious, and he found a kind of escape from his uh, boyhood of youthful poverty 
by developing a talent for public speaking. Uh, his mother was something of a lay preacher.